Welcome back to the On The Ball Podcast. This is episode 124 of the show and we're in person today. It's a magical thing, mate. How are you? Not bad, mate. Not bad. Great to be in person for the second time. Yeah. In a, in a better setting as well. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, you yeah. coming down, making the long trek down. <laughs> uh, but no, Five minute drive. We was going to try and get you and Rosef on together, but schedules didn't line up. So this week, going to do two separate ones. This one's going to be more of a review one. And then with Roe, more of a preview one for round, is it round seven next week? Yeah, round yeah. seven. All right, so it's usual structure pretty much. We'll just chat about the winners and losers to start us off, mate. So starting with the winners, who um, are you looking at here? Yeah, I'm going to kick us off with the Brisbane Lions. Um, a couple of weeks ago, they were starting to get some doubters um, yeah. from quite a few people. But the last two weeks, I think they've been back to their absolute best. Um, they have just lost their best player for probably a minimum of six weeks, but I think they're back to their finest form and looking good and locks for the top eight now, I'd say. Yeah, a lot of people thought Carlton were a chance there to win that on the weekend, but yeah, it was a good they win. were just, just outclassed them, really. Um, yeah. They're a pretty good side. They look like... There's probably seven teams, so I think we can lock in, even if some weeks they do disappoint us, but it looks like there's a seven team calibre that's just way better than everyone else and then we were talking about it last night I'm not sure where this 8th team is going to come from but we'll chat about it in our predicted top 8 segment coming up but yeah big win for Brisbane disappointing from Carlton but as um, our good mate Broadbent said last night Carlton's probably not the focus this week in terms of lifting people off probably should be more directed to like Colin yeah. and St Kilda yeah, so. there's definitely more worrying more worrying sides going on. Yeah, it's a little bit disappointing Carlton. for Carlton fans because it does look like they're probably behind where they were expecting to be. But, yeah, yeah. it's not the end of the world for Carlton. Yeah. They'll, they'll be good at some point. Well, they might not, but... You'd hope. <laughs> You'd hope. They're not, <laughs> they're not trash. They'll, been, be, they'll win some games. It's been the world's longest rebuild as well as actually in Melbourne. But yeah, you have to... a pretty large rebuild. Yeah, they're not very good at drafting. No. Or it's either they're not good at drafting or they're not good at developing after they bring them in. I don't know. It's one or, one or the other, but their draft picks never seem to be that good. I'll, my first win is Geelong. Uh, big bounce back victory. I tipped them, thankfully. Uh, that was a bit of a 50-50 tip for a lot of people, but um, just thrusted West Coast. <laughs> Did dirty things to West Coast. They kicked 16 goals, four behinds in the second and third terms combined compared to West Coast 1, goal 2. So I wasn't watching it, but I heard it was pretty silly. Um, they pretty much won every stat except for like a rebound 50s, which is fair enough when the ball just didn't enter their yeah. back 50. Uh, yeah, after a slow start, just an awesome way to bounce back at home. The Cattery is still one of the hardest places to play. And even though they ever had a slow start, they've been accumulating victories, so their ladder position hasn't really taken a hit like some of the other teams so they're looking still contenders for a top four spot yeah and yeah probably more question marks over west coast coming out of that one than geelong uh geelong without some of their best players still as good as we were expecting them to be west coast however it's getting a little bit silly their home away record i just quickly it's searched it up uh their away records five wins eight losses since the start of last season um which doesn't sound that bad but when you consider they're a top four well, a premiership contender, and the fact that their home record's 10-1, and one, uh, that's, that's pretty ridiculous. bad. <laughs> and a lot of their away games have not even been against strong teams. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. And a lot of them were actually, I think, neutral games last year, like they played in Queensland, and the home team wasn't really a home team. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty frustrating. I'm a little bit over it, to be honest. I actually don't mind West Coast, even though I know you don't like them at all, but actually, I don't, who am I kidding? I don't really <laughs> like them either, but um, yeah, it's pissing me off now because everyone talks about them in the same light as the likes of Port and Richmond and stuff, and they probably deserve it based on ladder positioning over the last few years, but you got to be able to win away from home yeah. if you're going to be a top four team or be talked about in the same ilk as Port and Richmond, so I'm over it. So I'm absolutely over it as well. I didn't watch the game either, but I came back home from soccer, saw the score, and I was just I was triggered. Yeah, was straight up triggered. And on top of it, Liam Duggan gave me forty in Supercoach. <laughs> um, so look, I he's a shit pick, but yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that later in the episode. But I'm a bit over it. Yep, they'll come out and pump Frio by eighty five this week. But still, yeah. we 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 can't get distracted by their home weeks. 
Um, and actually, looking back after Anzac Day, their win over Collingwood doesn't seem as impressive as it might have been on at the night. They did only beat them by like 30 points. But anyway, um, any other winners you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I'm going to mention Melbourne because yeah. I've actually still had doubts this entire time. But this week, they officially put them to bed by thrusting Richmond at the G. And <laughs> I, I actually can't. I'm struggling to believe it, to be honest. Like, yeah. over the past few years, they've had they've looked good in patches, but they've been really inconsistent. But now they're just coming out every week and just putting teams away. So, yeah, when we get to the ladder positions, I think they're they're locked in for me now. So yeah, they're basically locked in for finals, almost looking yeah. at lock for the top six. And the more weeks they win, the more chance they're looking like premiership contenders. Yeah. All they, they got to do now is just beat the team. Yeah, so they should beat. Hundred percent. They'll come top four. Yeah, they um. I was also looking at their schedule. They don't really play another top six contender till round eleven, where they play the dogs. So, they're every chance. They they haven't lost, have they? No. So they they're, yeah. they're every chance to be undefeated through ten weeks of the competition, which is basically a guaranteed top three, top two spot. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're looking really good. They also have some guys in form in the Magoos, and they pumped Richmond's VFL team by, like, 80. So, uh, yeah, the club's just firing in on all cylinders right now. Apparently um, Ben Brown kicked four or something as well. Yeah, Weed kicked and three Weed again, three, yeah. backing up his seven. So I don't know how they're going to fit into that team, to be honest, but, um, yeah, they're just looking pretty loaded in all aspects of the ground right now, looking like they've got one of the better... Duos down back with Lever and May. They're midfield yeah. strong. They've got the best Ruckman and their forward line. Although it's not that impressive on paper, it's certainly producing the goods. So, yep, well done to D's fans. They've gone through a lot of shit, but they look like they're reaping the rewards at the moment. Uh, I just want to finally touch on, before we get into the losers, Essendon. Well done to them. Yes, Collingwood aren't that strong at the moment. A lot of injuries, a lot of youngsters. But coming into the season... Anzac Day, no one would have predicted Essendon to beat Collingwood, so well done to them. Darcy Parrish went off, played off his tits, really, 42 yeah, touches. That was huge. Uh, Essendon just basically outwanted it. They had 30 more tackles than Collingwood, which is not really a stat of skill, that's more a stat of effort, so yeah. just great pressure, pressure from them, and they looked better with Andrew Phillips in the ruck compared to Peter Wright and whoever it was filling in there so yeah well done to the Bombers they're looking better than everyone was expecting uh, come preseason but losers time just quickly I swear Phillips every time he comes in he always just dominates but yeah, he just gets no games so yeah it's actually rough. It's a bit stiff to the yeah, man but so um yeah losers quite a few this week um we've already touched on a couple I think but I'll go the Saints once again just shit yeah. house I know they've just played two uh, like two of the very best teams in the comp but, like, you can't be getting pumped by 60 points and 100 points two consecutive weeks when you were meant to be a contender this season. So they've got to seriously go back to the drawing board and sort something out because I honestly thought they looked a bit soft, to be honest, which is large insult, but I think it's deserved. Well, I'll be honest. When I think of St Kilda, that's what I think of. Soft. Like, I just think of soft. Like, teams like They Hawthorne just seem too stuff. nice. Yeah, teams like Hawthorne, like, they seem like a team that will always have a crack. Yeah. Even if they're way worse than the team they're playing, they'll be competitive. They'll give it to them where, yeah, St. Kilda look like when the going gets tough, they're not, they're not really yeah, there legit, for it. Legit. Um, they're looking like they're full doing a Melbourne of 2018-19, I think it is. Um, yeah. Where, you know, they had a good year and then the next year it looks like they're just back to before the good season. So I'm sure it's really frustrating for St. Kilda fans. Uh, because they got a little glimpse of what it could be. Um, they got a glimpse of the promised land last year, but, yeah, they look absolutely shit. Yeah. Um, and they, and they got Rowan Marshall back as well, which a few fans were saying would make a big difference, yeah. and it just did nothing. Like, he, he was probably their best player. They still got pumped by 60s. So. Yeah, Paddy McGrath played in the Magoos so, for the Sandringham Ooh. Zebby, so he should be back yeah. next week, you'd imagine. Uh, you can't see him staying in the VFL too long. Um, so that will be they a bonus. Him. They definitely need him, yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, they've got Hawthorne this week, which I think is a good game for them because it's a bit of a measuring stick. If you're any team that's worth anything, you beat the Hawks, but then the Hawks are there to capitalise on anyone who's off their game, basically. So, 
Um, yeah, we'll see how they go. I reckon they might bounce back, but we'll talk about that with Rowie in the coming days. But yeah, really yeah. disappointing from St Kilda. We talked about it three weeks ago, how this fortnight will go, and it's pretty much gone as bad as it could have, really. Literally. Uh, literally. <laughs> the final loser I want to touch on is Sydney. I mentioned it last week. They're in my losers. I also predicted the Suns to beat them. I just think the wheels have fallen off, and this week was another confirmation of that really a 40 point loss to an out of form Suns lineup it's just pretty disappointing based on what we thought of them pre-season like that's not that outrageous yeah. but what we kind of changed our expectations to after the first three weeks uh yeah they've definitely b- performed below par in the last three weeks only beat Essendon by a goal or so lost the last two games as we just mentioned before, there is an eighth spot that's basically up for the taking and they still look like they're a chance to get there, but they've really got to turn the tide quickly. Yes, injuries aren't helping, but yeah, that's not good enough to yeah. lose to the Gold Coast Suns by 40. Uh, but yeah, any other it's losers? Not ideal. Um, we've already touched on West Coast and Collingwood, yeah. kind of, but um, yeah, pretty poor from them. Um, yeah, Collingwood were favourites going into Anzac Day. Now they're, I believe, 17th, sitting at 1-5. and five, so. They're crap. They're actually... Yeah, they're like, shit, I was looking shit. at that team on Sunday. I know they've got a few injuries, but it's rubbish. Like, it's dog shit. I don't know how you can fall out of a premiership window as fast as they did. <laughs> <laughs> like, they had an elite team on paper for a f- fair few years there, and now it's like they legit look like they're in a rebuild, which I'm yeah. not sure how that's happened so quick. But yeah, yeah, I'm actually not sure what it is. Yeah, like, like their four. It's mainly their forward line, I think. But like, it's not just that. Yeah, but like, anyway, yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, um, back back to Sydney. Do you really think that Buddy makes this much of an nah. impact, or you just think it's coincidental? Nah, I just think it's a coincidence, really. Yeah, like I, I like the Bud, but yeah. maybe it's a psychological Bud thing. Wiser. Who knows? But could be, could be. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I don't think he's really changing the team that much. What have, are they undefeated with him? Um. Yeah, they would be. They would be, yeah. Play the last did, two weeks. did he play last week? No, I don't. Against the Giants? Actually, you don't even He know. might have actually. Yeah, he, he actually did. Have, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah, so he's dog shit as well. Yeah. <laughs> but nah. Um, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing from Sydney, but don't want to live them off too much because they have overperformed so far. And we do love them. So. Yeah, we do love Horse and the boys. Um, predicted top eights, mate. Yeah. So I think mine is fairly similar to last week. I've still got Port top. Bulldogs second, which yeah. I had two weeks ago, but now I've chucked Melbourne up to third. I think I had them fifth or sixth, but I'm finally believing. So they're third. Richmond fourth, even though they're three and three. Just think they'll get it done. And then you got Geelong fifth. By the way, Geelong are already in the top four yeah. after being like sixteenth <laughs> a couple of weeks ago or whatever. But anyway, yeah. Brizzy sixth, West Coast seventh, just because they'll pump everyone at Optus. And then the eighth spot we talked about. It's pretty much impossible to pick, but I've still got the Swannies in there just because no one's really putting their hands up to, to fill that spot. Yeah. Like, Frio are four and two, but they've played shit teams, so yeah, I reckon Sydney. Sydney at the moment. I'm actually interested to see who comes out. It could be anyone. Yeah. Like we've, but they're gonna get like we've talked a lot of crap about St Kilda, final. but they're legit not even out of it, out of the mix. Like yeah, they not. could just turn around and start playing well again, like they did in that West Coast game. So even teams like Carlton, yeah. They could still turn around or someone like a Gold Coast. So, yeah, it's wide open. Um, I, I hope Frio come eighth, to be honest. I think they deserve it more than yeah. the other teams. I like Frio. Frio or Sydney, Frio I'm happy with Sydney, that. Yeah. I don't really want St Kilda or Carlton. Sorry to those fans. I know they have <laughs> waited, are waiting for success for a Steve long time. But, uh, yeah, one to eight. I've got the Doggies coming first now. Uh, I've done a ladder predictor, by the way, because, yeah, I'm not smart enough to think of my top eight myself. So I've got them over Port on percentage. Uh, then I've got Melbourne coming in at third now. I've got Richmond fourth and West Coast fifth. I've also got Geelong at sixth, Brisbane at seventh. So same top seven, just in a little bit of a di- different order, but same top four as well, actually. Then at eighth, I've got Sydney as well. I've actually got a massive gap between eighth and ninth, but I think I must have overrated Sydney in those um, in the latter predicted tipping because, yeah, that doesn't seem about right because I've got Sydney winning 14 games. Well, S- Sydney probably have won. an easy fixture, to be, to be fair. Yeah, true. And they're, they're good at home, but they're, they're not winning 14 games like I've predicted here. But I was probably stiff on a few teams like GWS only winning five games, which probably yeah, isn't that, happening. That looks a bit stiff. <laughs> 17th. North, I let them win two games. 
is that kind? Yeah, like, let's be honest. They're, they're not going to go and win zero yeah, games. I think, no one ever does that. I think it's games in Tassie. Like, yeah, I think I cool. tipped them for both games in Tassie. They had weak opponents, so I don't remember off the top of my I head. I think they're playing there soonish. Yeah, that yeah, they actually might be this weekend. Against the D's. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't tip them in that one. Trust me. No, I'm not 100 percent sure if they are. It might be the following next yeah. week. I, I'm I pretty sure it's scanning though. the fixtures yeah. and it's soonish. Uh, but yes, we saw the Tasmanian effect for the Hawthorne Hawks. Well done to the Hawks on the comeback, by the way. That was pretty yeah. outrageous goal. Yeah. And we, we were licking off our mate, our Hawthorne. Well, to be mate, fair, they did beat year. Adelaide by one goal. Yeah, or whatever. And they were down by 30 at one stage, but yeah, and the same thing happened to Essendon in round one. So. Not sure if Hawthorne are actually that good, but, well, no one thinks they yeah, are that they're, good. They're not. <laughs> they're not. All right. It was a fair effort from um, the Adelaide goal-kicking, though. That was a good game to watch. I don't know how much you saw of it. Yeah, I watched a fair bit. It was, like, clean, and, yeah, yeah it was just really good to watch. Um, all right, players of the week, mate. Yeah. I think we're rocking with the top three here, and then we've also got rookie of the week. Your top three? Who are you looking at? Uh, I'll start from third, and I'm going to give my third to Ben Keys. From the Crows, um, put on an absolute clinic. He's actually one of the more underrated, yeah, like 100%. hugely underrated. He's basically a bloody, almost an elite player this season with the numbers he's putting up. But I think he had 31 disposals, 10 clearances, 11 tackles. So yeah, just put on a clinic and uh, unfortunately didn't get over the line. But yeah. Yeah, no. I actually froth Ben Keys as well. Yeah, I like, I'm actually a fan. Because of Lock- it's because of Lions Locker Talk. <laughs> it actually it's is purely views of lines like talk. Yeah, but no. He's a funny bloke. But um He's second second uh two votes, Took Miller. Took uh, Gold Coast. Saw his stats and he put on an absolute clinic. Yeah, best clinic. on ground for the Gold Coast in a good win against Sydney. Did you watch any of that game? No. But he got did tagged. You know it, oh, did he? He and got he tagged still... after quarter time and he still thrust. Oh, well, there you go. He's a, he's underrated as well. He's actually a bit of a whip. Yeah. But um do you know if that game was wet? Because I swear it was just the midfielders all dominated. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, my number one player, probably not really a surprise, but Darcy Parrish, 42 touches, two goals, Anzac Day medal, easily his best game of his career so far, you'd say. And uh, yeah, well, well done to Darcy Parrish. Yeah, stiff, don't mind him as a player. Stiff Darcy, I haven't done my votes for Sunday's game, so he hasn't cost so. me <laughs> Actually, I did the early Sunday one because I knew my rising star would be from there. But honorable mentions to Jack Zebel. Silly, yeah, pe- silly yeah. performance, but I'm yeah. not having it in my top three because he did get throusted. Um, number three, I'm going with I don't know, JPK. Ball, but... Oh, yeah, his stats were <laughs> fucked. It, it, it was in a loss, and he started this year slowly, but the last few weeks, his JPK of old really had the second most inside 50s, dominated contested possessions, clearances, the whole lot. JPK is pretty sure he had over 40 touches as well and that suggests it's a wet game so (laughs) yeah that actually yeah because he is a wet animal but um yeah and then next he's obviously been in the news for his poor goal kicking but he has actually been tearing it up around the ground really Nathan Fife uh he was my man of the match for that game Uh, he had second most inside 50s basically the same stat line as JPK really most score involvements most score launches most Kentucky marks um, which he loves. So yeah. Love it when Fife takes it. If he Kentucky starts kicking Mark. goals, I think if he'd slotted like three goals in the last two weeks, he'd probably be right up there in the brown low, but his goal yeah. kicking is probably letting him down because it's getting him in the news for all the wrong reasons, uh, which is a bit stiff when he's playing that well. And then number one, I'm going Christian Petrarca. You won the medal. I don't know yeah. really what the medal's for. I guess it's Anzac Day Eve clash, but yeah. it's a bit strange. There was a medal for the Port Saints game as well. Oh, maybe. Ollie Wines got it so yeah they might be just be introducing a few medals yeah but Petrarca absolutely dominated second most tackles most clearances second most meters gained from midfield which is pretty weird um and then most inside 50 so yep he gets first use from Gorney but he definitely makes most of it and yeah lived up to the billing obviously Dusty got injured but um won that won that contest really between them I know Dusty yeah. got injured but he actually like had a fair amount of time on ground yeah, like it was I like was, at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, I was legit worried. Had about eight touches. Yeah, I, when I saw his super coach, I was like, oh, just because he got injured. And then I saw his time on ground. I was like, yeah. he was legit on track for 60. Yeah, so He was having a stinker. Um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, they're my one, two, three. I'll go rookie of the week. I think we've got a different person. Well, 
somewhat of a different person. Yeah. So I don't know if he's actually young enough to be the rising star. I'm not sure. But in terms of games, he is anyway. Jacob Kashitsky. Uh, he's had a. <laughs> what is that wrong? <laughs> um, he's had a pretty disappointing start to the year. Um, obviously, kicked six goals. I think it was in the community. What's it called? Yeah, the J- well, the JLT, the JLT anymore, NAB Community I League. Well, yeah. I don't know. That's Sunday. Marsh I think. Cup but or some shit. Yeah, the preseason games. Uh, he tore that up. So he had some wraps on him coming into the year. Probably underperformed a little bit then got dropped well managed and then through Mitchell Lewis's suspension came back and he absolutely tore it up on the weekend here Mitch Lewis and Tim O'Brien actually formed a pretty nice combination up there in the tall forwards for the Hawks he kicked five goals all in the first half I think or he had kicked four at half time so yeah, he might have had it one four. late yeah. uh, he, but he also had 11 score involvements which showed he wasn't just kicking them himself he was setting them up for everyone else so yeah just well on to him really it was pretty infuriating to watch because everyone had him on their super coach fields basically because of Ridley but I didn't I traded him out a few weeks ago so that hurt but yeah fair enough well put. well done to him and you've gone the other star from that game yeah I, can't, I couldn't really split them but um, yeah, I'll talk both. about Riley Thilthorpe or <laughs> Tiltorpe <laughs> Thilthorpe Tortorpe <laughs> but um, yeah debut five snags He, I'm pretty sure he started the first quarter by just kicking two straight to Kashitsky for two of his goals. And everyone was just like, this this bloke sucks. But he came out and kicked five after that. And I'm, I thought I think I saw somewhere that that's the record goals on a debut out of any current player. So pretty large achievement there. Respect. Um, and yeah, looks like he's going to be a weapon. Yeah, he's a bit of a utility as well. They kept, they only mentioned it 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> on coverage but he can play every position so well done to him looks like a bit of a well he's not a Jack Lowe Lukosius um, prototype yeah. but he's got that um, versatility in his game so well done to those two tore it up in Tassie yep. in probably one of the most entertaining games of the round but um, next up we've got Supercoach Tour sadly not going to enjoy this segment am I <laughs> um, yeah my fortunes did not change well it's not really fortunes at this point it's just skill but uh, yeah, had another crap week, um, but more to the point, got you on here. Also, not because you're a genius about footy, mate, but you're also a genius about super coach. Silly mate. Um, silly, mate. Broke his bakers have had a flying start to the season. Not did, a bad start. Did yeah. the tides change a little bit on the weekend, or it's still rolling nicely? Um, yeah. So last week I had a bit of a setback, dropped about 600 spots, but this week I think I put up 2270 and went up. 24 places so pretty much stayed exact same but considering I had Dusty Ridley a couple others I'll take it yeah and um yeah unfortunately I traded in Neil this week which is not ideal but I'll just tra- trade him next week to a yeah, basically anyone I want probably Petrarca yeah, I had another crap of a week. Um, surprise, surprise. Just a little bit of background. I'm actually not bad at fantasy sport. Just yeah, no, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm all right. You're an experienced veteran. Yeah, like I'm fantasy. not bad at NFL fantasy. When I turn it on, I get good. When I when I don't, I don't. I go zero and four to start the season. Fa- fantasy EPL, I'm pretty handy as well. Gone twelve and one in that. I think since I've started trying. So I, I know my stuff, but I've just had an awful year this year. Uh, made some awful decisions, started my research too late probably, um, and just didn't watch enough footy last year. So my knowledge is trash, but I've had a, just a disgusting year. Rolling through some of my finest from the weekend, Hunter Clark, 61, brought him in, <laughs> my big off-season sign. Nah, to be honest, that was a shit trade, and he was sick all week, so I wasn't really expecting much from him, so that's a great trade. Duggan, 41. Uh, gave me 150 last week and gave me 40 this week. I'm not sure how that's physically possible. Do you know where he's playing? Well, he plays half back, but so does like half their team. So I don't. So I don't he's re- not in the guts. I don't know how he didn't do well though, because the ball was there the whole time. Yeah, it was weird. I but don't know. yeah, he only had like 10 touches after having 35 the week before, which is weird. Caleb Daniel, I held on to him through all the suspension stuff, but he actually looks like he's genuinely bad this year. Um, Bailey Dale seems to have stolen a little bit of that role took the most kick-ins for the team on the weekend so that hurts Daniel but he's also just not getting as many touches as he was last year um, had Chapman on field he got 36 which I'm sure a lot of people cop so I can't really complain about that 
And then just looking elsewhere, my midfield's just shit, really. Uh, Lukey Parker, he's up and down. I can't blame Luke Parker. He's not been my worst player. But Tom Mitchell and Josh Kelly, unperforming. Tom Mitchell just averaging over 100, which I was expecting him to be one of my primos. And then Josh Kelly is just, as we were talking about last night, zero centre bounce attendances in the last two weeks, I think. And, yeah, that's really hurting his case. He's just playing forward, not kicking many goals, and he's just scoring low because of it. I know it's frustrating you, as you are a big Josh Kelly fan, but he's yeah. averaging just over 90 now, which is crap considering how expensive he is. Yeah, that's lower uh, than Crips, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, it's just, that hurts. Straight dog shit. But, but um, yeah. Look, well, I, not much else to say, really. Matt Flynn put up 70, like he's a 270k ruckman, so I can't expect too much more. Traded in Zebel, he had a nice debut of 169 that's a, that's for me. That's a great trade in. Then again, everyone does have Zebel now, yeah. so it was a bit late to that party. Jimmy Rowe also gave me 27, so shout outs to Jimmy Rowe. <laughs> um, but we were going to chat a little bit about our best and worst trades of the season, and then I might talk about with Rowe some trade targets coming up this week. Um, we'll also get your what well, you basically just told us your trade opinions but what's been your best and worst trade of the year so far it's kind of hard to isolate trades because some yeah. of them are two two yeah. man jobs but I'm not gonna lie a lot of my trades have been mediocre i think i had a really good starting team but my trades have been average but my best was definitely tom phillips to impy straight after round one or after round two actually when phillips was looking shit and impy was like 200k yeah, and I'm pretty sure Impy's turned up in every game since I've got him. So that so that was a huge bonus for me. And Phillips has just been straight dog shit. So that was a very good trade. Yeah, and my worst trade probably a little bit unlucky, but this week I went Braden Campbell to Neil. Neil yeah. scored ninety odd, and he's out for eight weeks or whatever. So straight out, not ideal. Yep, yeah, straight out, straight out. Yeah, but that um, hurts. Yeah. Um, you're probably not the only one in that boat. I think a lot of people yeah. did hop on him last week, but it, yeah, it's rough. You already had Clover, didn't you? No, I don't have Clover. Oh, okay, so, so yeah, I am hurts, looking at a few players, including Clover, to yeah to swap him for. But yeah, that that hurts because I know that was a fifty fifty for a fair few people. But yeah, not much you can do, sadly. Um, but yeah, fair enough. Um, looking at my best and worst trades, most of my trade outs have been injuries, so you can't really say that they were too bad because it's not like I've pulled the pin on anyone. My worst trade though is probably the weekend. Um, obviously, he's only played one week for me, but it's not looking good because he's giving me sixty. But I went Jeremy Howe to Hunter Clark. Howe obviously injured. Went Hunter Clark. Was considering Jake Lever, who put up a ton, I think. Uh, so that looks like it would have been the better option, but uh, yeah, Hunter Clark looks like he's going to be up and down. He's either going to give me a hundred or sixty, which is not really ideal when the rest of my team's not performing. Um, other bad trades I've done: round five, I went Meek and Fullerton to Tracy, 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 however you want to say, it, and Waterman. Um, Tracy, I didn't really bring him in for cash generation. It was more just to avoid a donut and also make some money in dropping down Meek. But he has risen 5K. That just shows how bad he's done. He scored 22 on the weekend. Obviously not on my field, but yeah, and that's not a deal. Price as well. Yeah, I don't know why. I didn't really factor in when I did that trade. I know it gives me money to go Meek down, but like I bought in Meek at like 117K or whatever he is. So it wasn't like a waste of money to have him on the bench where I was viewing him more like I was just having 200k just sitting there where but yeah um and then I brought in Waterman who got dropped already and he yeah that really I'm sure a lot of people same boat but he did not make much money at all he did have six scoring shots in the VFL on the weekend but he only kicked two goals which hurts two four yeah so if he'd kicked four two he might be seeing his way back into the side but He did have a good game from all reports, so hopefully he comes back in because he's got more money to make. But, yeah, at this point, I don't actually think he's going to make enough money in any way, even if he comes back to downgrade him. So that looks like a bit of a wasted trade because Fulton wasn't that much money anyway. Uh, Also did get Grundy in for Dylan Shield, essentially. Um, Obviously, there was a lot of trades involved in that one, but that was a pretty handy trade. And then... 
Went Menegol and Raoul after round two. Both got injured to Zorko and Dunkley, who up until this stage have both been fully-fledged primos. Dunkley is obviously out now. Well, seemingly out. With yeah. sh- He's probably going to need shoulder surgery, yeah, no, so it's that confirmed. hurts. 16 weeks, apparently. So that actually hurts yeah. the dogs. Um, but, yeah, everyone will cop that. So, yeah, look, I'm happy for what Dunkley's produced so far. But, yeah, in terms of trades this week I'll be honest I don't really know where to go with my team now I think I was just saying to Pilch before we came on air I think I'm just going to have to pray that some of my underperforming primos turn good and I think I'm just going to have to start upgrading some of my rookies because they're starting to drop in price and I don't want them to be wasted so blokes like Josh Kelly Tom Mitchell Caleb Daniel even I might just have to hope they come good I uh, probably will get rid of blokes like Liam Duggan, but yeah, I think I'm just going to have to stick it out with Kelly Mitchell and Daniel and other guys and Parker. I just got to start upgrading the blokes like Goulden, Chapman, uh, Jimmy Rowe as well. Braden Campbell, I still got him. He went down a little bit on the weekend. So yeah, look, it's not a deal. I have 200k in the bank, so I should be able to make some nice trades this week. Oh, I've also got Jack Buckley on my bench at 330k, which is a bit strange, but... Good pick, though. Um, yeah, great pick. Great pick. He, he, to be fair, he's made me 100k, but so is rookies who are 200k less. So. Yeah, but he's 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 put out decent scores as well. Yeah, it's just whenever he does well, he's been on my pine. But anyway, oh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. I can't really complain about that. Um, so yeah, Dunkley out this week, obviously, and we'll just see where we go from there. Hopefully bring in two certified premiums. Um, but yeah, it's not looking great right now for the side. By the way, with Neil out, Zorko... That's a could, great could go off because he, he plays like half half. But if he goes into the guts, I actually might look at yeah. bringing him in for Dunkley. Imagine he starts getting tagged though. He actually he used to get tagged quite a bit, didn't he? Yeah, he used to be a god. Yeah, he did. Um, hopefully they tag lines, but um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. They might not tag anyone. Uh, well, we won't. Port won't anyway on the weekend because yeah, we they give tag. zero fucks. Um, and we'll get and we'll lose as a result. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Do you think I'm a chance at top 50k from here? Yeah, I'm currently 50, sitting, yeah. I think 84k. So that, that's not ambitious. I think I think top 20k is ruled out. Yeah, no, but that was ruled out from day one. Top 30, top 30k. St- <laughs> that was ruled out when I had the Dave Jack start. Buckley in my D5. <laughs> uh, uh, top 30k though. Top 30k. All right, back, back all right. Up. That's my new plan. Top 30k mission to top 30k. Let's go. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about trade targets with Rosef probably, but I could bring in Gorney through Josh Treaky. He could serve his first purpose to the side. Gorney so much. Also got to get rid of Logan McDonald. There's so many people I've got to get rid of, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But yeah, thanks for joining me today, mate. We have Pleasure, mate. absolutely analysed the shit out of round six of the AFL. I, I would say we've put on a clinic. Yeah, we have. We have. I would say As we, we always do, though. We do, but yeah. But the in-person clinic, is a yep. 9 out of 10 the online clinics are 7 out of 10 it's a good so. dy- it's a better dynamic yeah it's, sure. better. it's better but, you know just bouncing off each other <laughs> no <laughs> lag no pause but yeah nah um, thanks for listening and watching if you've gotten this far thanks for joining me Pilch I know you've got to go to work mate since old mate Nosnut has yeah he's pulled a sicky so. yeah nah he's probably sick gonna so have to so cover that one Nos. but yeah uh, I've got to go tell my footy coach that I can't play <laughs> <laughs> no, for the rest of the year. Yeah, I'm not sure why I've just said that on the potty, but um, yeah, no, nah, we'll go have that chat. But yeah, cheers. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs>